I hereby introduce to you, Mr. Michael Veazey. Back to the whole question of um, wholesalers then. Is there... Uh... Is it valid to, you know, approach a wholesaler and try and sell on Seller Central? Is that still a viable business model for now? Um, yeah, for sure. Like, what do you mean by wholesaler? Like a, a wholesaler or a person who owns a bunch of different brands or a brand owner? Uh, let's talk about both. Let's talk about a brand owner first. So a brand owner for sure. Um, the wholesaler, I don't know as much because if they have to get make some margin too and everything, I don't know if there's going to be enough meat on the bone. And probably they have other accounts at wholesaler that are Amazon sellers who are trying to do the same thing. Okay. So it, that, that seems like a little bit more riskier. Right, risky. Okay. So you want to go straight to the brand owners if possible. So in this case, like Black Diamond, Climbing Equipment or whoever. Exactly. Okay. So like there's, if you go to like backcountry.com, backcountry.com carries um, Black Diamond and a bunch of other climbing brands. Now I wouldn't, I wouldn't contact Backcountry. I can't contact each brand. Okay, makes sense. Makes total sense because the more people, middlemen you got, the more people need to make a cut. The more competition they're creating for you. So, um, so it's reasonable to go to the, the brand and say we can sell you on Seller Central. It doesn't have to be all about Vendor Express. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Because I mean, obviously, um, Vendor Express sounds like an amazing, powerful platform. Also, sounds pretty complex if you've got to get your logistics in place to have a warehouse that can fulfill you know five units of this and two units of that and five units of that and and confirm within 24 hours but i can see how that would scale up but i mean i think contacting the brands is a an easier thing to do for yourself to start with it makes a lot of sense now um backing off completely to a, a not exactly the same topic but the link topic the whole question of launching now post incentivized reviews obviously if you're going to a brand and you're saying yeah we can sort you out on amazon clean up a listing for anyone who knows anything isn't going to be so hard to you know to, to get the bullet points written well to make sure you've got some good images etc we know about these things that's straightforward ppc is harder but still a known quantity but what do you do to actually get something launched in the first place these days so um this is just one of the reasons why i went this approach because i don't want to deal with launching right I'd rather just do the easy stuff, right. you know, sell something that has 10,000 reviews. Um, but so it's like just one one point just to kind of uh, uh, to underscore it is that like don't do something that's hard just because it's hard, right. you know? Yeah. So like people who are trying to build their brand from scratch and try to launch and do all this stuff, it's like how about you just make money first? <laughs> and then like yeah. once you're comfortable and you're bored of your money, then go build your brand. <laughs> yeah, okay. But like, but it, it, it's kind of one of these things where it's like, okay, well, you're kind of asking me like, how do I do this the hard way? Because you keep saying all the easy ways. Um, and it's like, well, I guess here's a here's a way to do it the hard way, but I don't know if I can fully recommend it. Um, but okay, here a legitimate launch strategy that we just had. This is how lazy I am. We just got a bunch of um, like ping pong accessories from China. Yeah, got them in, slap labels on them, no real packaging to so them. So this is private labeling then, basically. Private labeling them, sent them into Amazon. We sent in four different types, and we bundled them in like two and four packs, and, and some one packs. I just checked. Um, we got them in stock like December first. Yeah. I just checked. We've sold about three hundred and fifty-seven units in the last like month and a half. Right. We just got our first review. We, so I did, so we just got our first review. We spent about a grand on PPC to make four grand. Okay. So like our A cost about 25%. So that about breaks, breaks even, but it gets to some traction. But anyways, like I was saying, we're selling like seven units a day, making about six, $7 a unit. And I did nothing besides just throw it up on Amazon. Okay. Just because I picked the right niche, I picked the right keywords, I made sure I went after a market that I knew I could compete in just on price, and I answered all the questions ahead of time that I didn't need a launch strategy. If you're going to sit there and go after everyone who has, every, every single person has for that keyword, 1,500 reviews on the first page, well, then you need 1,500 reviews just to be even with them. Yeah. It's like, well, what's your strategy to get 1,500 reviews? Well, you're just going to give away? 15? That doesn't sound like sustainable. You're gonna do a, a bunch of social media. Well, how are you gonna track that? How are you gonna? How do you know if you're spending money correctly? Like all these kind of weird questions, where it's like, only do the absolute stuff. You have, to, you know, what I'm saying it's just why not make it easier on yourself? Yeah. So the essence of making it easier is just basically better, picking the right niche and the right keywords, and basically. 
Well, yeah, it's, it, I've said it before where the person contacts me and says, hey, I want to sell dog leashes. And I go, why? And they go, because I love dogs. And I just never can, I can't do anything about that. There's, there's, not, there's no way for it to bleed through on your Amazon listing that you're a dog lover. No. You can't put that in the title. It's not going to help. And so you say, well, why do you want to sell dog leashes? Well, I see there's a gap in the market of seeing eye dog leashes that no one's selling. And I noticed, too, that all the seeing eye dog leashes are 20 feet long. That makes no sense if the person's blind. The dog could easily lead them into a pole or something. They should only be four feet long so they can have a good grip and know exactly where their dog is at all times. Okay, so you found a gap in the market. You found a specific keyword. And you found a way to differentiate yourself and make the product better and add value. And did you have to do some weird, complicated uh, manufacturing stuff? No, you just cut the, the leash six feet or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And so it's like, let's make it easier instead of trying to go after, I know, but this is the prettiest pink dog leash I found. I'm, I'm sure other people, I showed my cousin and my grandma, and they both said it's great too. Yeah. Like that, that anecdotal evidence doesn't do anything for me. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, makes total sense. So basically, you're going to basically, mm, what's the word? You're making the launch irrelevant because you just pick the product that's got strong demand and limited competition anyway yeah okay makes total sense um i was gonna ask you about a couple of other areas but then they could get a little bit too big for this one but just just thinking a bit bigger about off amazon opportunities because obviously you're a man who thinks big picture anyway um people are getting very excited about walmart do you see an opportunity similar to amazon there nah um, I don't know anyone who has the Walmart app on their phone, okay. you know, like, I don't know. It's like everyone in America, at least like tries to go out of their way to like not shop at Walmart. Okay. Like there, if you, you can literally Google people of Walmart Okay. and see, see what comes up. So like that, it has a very negative stigma. So it's like almost like similar to like eBay. So do I think eBay is going to take over Amazon? It's like, no. Can they take a chunk of their sales? Yeah, for sure. But like, do I think they're going to be a major competitor? It's like, no. People prefer the nice Amazon experience, one-click checkout. Um, they get their products in two hours, opposed to having to pay for three-day shipping on, on Walmart, pay for higher prices on Walmart. It's just kind of ridiculous. And then, two, at that point, if I'm going to buy all the stuff on Walmart.com, why not just drive down the street and just go to Walmart? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I suppose that's true. So they've already got their channel, and that's the yeah. physical store, and that's for a certain type of person kind of thing. Exactly. And how many uh, gris do they sell on it, on Walmart.com? Yeah, I'd imagine not many. It's too precious. That's very interesting because exactly. I, I hear some people getting very excited about it. Um, there's Brett Bartlett, I think, from, um, was it the Proven Amazon, Proven Product in Inventory, I think it is, from uh, one of Jim Cochran's people seems to be quite excited about it. But I don't know. Maybe they got certain types of product that sell to Walmart-type customer. I don't know. But that's very interesting. I think too, if, if, if they think that they actually have like a brand and like a fancy product, like a cool baby product that they designed from scratch, if they're thinking, okay, well, I increase sales by 10, 15% by going to walmart.com, it starts selling well there, they start carrying me in Walmart stores. Now my little private label product I created 18 months ago now is being carried in Walmart, Target, and is like a real brand. So I think they're getting more, maybe more excited from that kind of opportunity opposed to just like straight cash. So it's not Walmart.com that excites them. It's Walmart, the retail stores, really. I think maybe Walmart, that, and just kind of the name Walmart. Because like, even to, like, my grandparents have no idea what Amazon.com is. Right. You know, but if I told them my products were being sold in Walmart, they would think I was the coolest guy ever. Right, yeah. Yeah, okay, so that's an interesting one. So maybe it's more, they, they sense an opportunity slash. It's a kind of, it's a household name thing. But, yeah, because, I mean, obviously it's not something we have in the UK, really. So, uh, I mean, Walmart, Asda, there's a bit of a link, but, um, it doesn't really have the same sort of resonance of stigma. Uh, I suppose I'm trying to think what the equivalent is. I don't think there's a supermarket that's really kind of totally stigmatized in the UK in the same way, but that's, it's worth bearing in mind as well, actually. So talking about the, uh, eBay thing, obviously I know you've made quite a bit of money in the past on eBay. Um, so you think that's going to shrink as a percentage of e-commerce over the next two, three years or? I, I was literally just talking to a, um, a stockbroker and a like hedge fund manager who owns a bunch of eBay. Okay. And we were just having this conversation. Okay. And basically he was saying, yeah, eBay looks pretty good compared to the rest of the retail companies. If you compare their financials okay. and I go, well, who are the rest of the retail companies? Macy's who's closing 10,000 stores, 
Sears.com, who's closing 6,000 stores. Like, yeah. okay, so you're comparing them to all these people who are about to go bankrupt. Well, that's not a very good sign. <laughs> so yeah, of course they look good compared to them. And he goes, yeah, but they, um, they grow uh, it's like three and a half percent year over year pretty consistently. And I go, okay, again, how did you see what the S&P average was for 2016? The S&P average, the normal stock companies grew 18%. It's like three percent. That's not that cool. Yeah. And two, if you just look, like the number of Americans getting online each year grows by three percent. So it's like they're growing at like the pace of the internet and like slower than GDP. It's like okay, well that doesn't really get me anything too excited. So yeah, they're growing. They're not going out of business, but at the same time, it's like are they growing that much faster than everything else around them? Well, currently yes, because everything around them is blowing up. Yeah. But like if you compare them just to the normal economy, no. Yeah, interesting. So, the, yeah, the, the even the background financials on the company are that exciting. So, uh, yeah, well, I think that that is probably going to wrap it up unless we get into crazy amounts of, of uh, detail because other than that, <laughs> um, I think we, we're going to end up in – there's a couple of quick questions I've got here um, which might be useful, but uh, uh, any tips – but, yeah, some, if you want to get started on Venue Express quickly, any tips for picking a product to put through it and get it accepted easily? You just want to find a product that Amazon in that category is not sourcing and selling any. And then, because then they're really going to want to get their grubby hands on it. And two, if you have a bunch of sales history on top of that, then Amazon will just love it. Okay. So uh, find something they're not selling yet. And me something meaning what, sort of for a particular, like for Gree Gree, for example. You find it was so yeah, you, you, Well, you looked at there's not a single climbing rope that's currently shipped and sold by Amazon. Right. But then you look in dog leashes and nine out of the 10 dog leashes are shipped and sold by Amazon already. But they're probably not too excited to get any more dog leashes. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Absolutely. Um, and um, yeah, so ultimately, this is probably one of those stupid questions, but somebody's asked me to ask it. So um, FBA selling versus Vendor Express, which is your sort of preferred channel? It's... I. I Basically, it totally just depends on too many variables. Depends on how much cash flow you have, what kind of distributor you have, what type of competition is like, all that kind of stuff. And so if you really laid it out to me saying, I got a Chinese supplier, I buy iPhone cases from them, I buy 10,000 at a time, our differentiator is that ours are waterproof, no one else is. Like, what do you, th and then what we have $100,000 in the bank, what do you think we should do? And then from there, it'd be like, all right, maybe you should go Seller Central first, get some momentum, move it over to Vendor Central. So then they see the momentum, they start ordering it from you type of thing. Because then when you're in Seller Central with iPhone cases, good luck. You're going to be ranked thousands. If you're in Vendor Central, you might be ranked number one for waterproof iPhone case. Yeah. You know? And so then it's like you use kind of use Vendor Central to get the ranking. Then you still have your Seller Central to kind of balance it out. So then if you ever want to quit selling to Amazon, you still have that ranking, but you're on Seller Central. Like it's it's a lot more kind of complicated than – and then two, a lot of companies like just talking to a company out in Hong Kong, they don't want to pay sales tax in every state that they have their stuff fulfilled. So they're doing Vendor Central just because it's easier under taxes than Seller Central. Okay, so you don't have, okay, because of course you're not a retail seller, you're selling wholesale, so you don't pay sales tax, right? Exactly. So the all sorts of, exa, exa, so it's, and then too, like Amazon pays for a lot of inbound shipping from you to Amazon. So Vendor Central makes a lot more sense if you're selling hot tubs, because then Amazon will cover the shipping cost, and that's huge. Yeah, yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. So there's just, there's way too many variables to be able to answer any question generally. Makes a lot of sense. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. Well, those are very, very useful things to, to, to think about, like no sales tax and then shipping. Yeah, shipping large items and that in itself, I mean, any kind of barrier to entry, I mean, if you can get something large, which would be impossible for something to sell profitably on Sell Essential, but you can persuade Amazon that they can ship it in, um, then that suddenly makes that a viable product. Yeah, I, one of our, um, like the publicly traded companies, I run their Amazon account. Their average product is like, um, say, like two and a half meters by two and a half meters by two and a half meters. Wow. Hmm. And so, like, without Vendor Central, good luck. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. So, basically, it enables you to sell products profitably that would just be completely hopeless without. Very interesting. Well, I think before we blow everybody's brains, um, we better <laughs> wrap up a little bit on the uh, that whole topic area. 
just uh, one final area to ask you about, which is one that I love to ask somebody of your sort of breadth of thinking about, which is your predictions for 2017 and indeed beyond. Where do you think things are going? You already said that in three years' time, um, Amazon is going to be bypassing third-party sellers, which is, makes a lot of sense in terms of their business model. Um, what are your other predictions that are going to be a little bit sooner than that? So I think 2017, third-party sales still probably grow from 2016. Okay. But at the same time, I think Amazon slowly but surely um, condenses. If you look at their latest earnings report um, for, for their last quarter, they said the amount of items on Amazon offered for sale has gone down, but the number of items fulfilled by Amazon has gone up. So I think Amazon's cleaning up a lot of those junky Chinese sellers that are yeah. selling stuff at super expensive costs, merchant fulfilled. I think they got people like me going through and condensing all the listings. Yeah. And so once they kind of get rid of a lot of like the riffraff, there's going to be just, it's going to be very plain and simple who are the private labelers who care and who are the ones who are selling just junk. And eventually those junk ones are kind of phase themselves out. And so I think the amount of sales of third party sellers will maybe grow, but the amount of third party sellers and the amount of third party products offered may fall over time. And then, so like by the time 2018 rolls around, everyone's going to be wanting to kind of find some way to differentiate themselves because they're going to see that the third party selling is kind of a thing of the past as Amazon cleans up their catalog. Makes sense. Well, Will, it's been a thought provoking and a pleasure to have to talk to you. And uh, I'd better go <laughs> dig around in Vendor Express and, uh, make some decisions about what uh, I might try and sell on that. So um, where can people get hold of you, Will? Where can they hear more of your thoughts and your strategies? Um, our consulting company is called Goat Consulting, goatconsulting.com. Um, if you want, email me at will at goat consulting. Um, I have a vendor central versus um, seller central um, calculator, profit calculator. So email me and say, hey, I need that calculator, and I'll send it over your way. Um, besides that, Twitter, at WTJERN, Facebook slash Churnland. Um, you can find me anywhere. I'm pretty easy to find. My last name's kind of goofy. Yeah. Yeah, I can sympathize. Uh, VZ is one of those that I've been spelling my entire life and nobody can ever pronounce. So, yeah, you, you have my sympathy there. Well, well, thank you. I'm sure that I'm, I'm certainly going to be one of the first people to email you for your profit calculator because I'm always interested in seeing different ways of doing that. People are always e emailing me for profit calculators. So I'm always interested to, to compare and to see if I'm missing something important or my ratios and way of measuring the wrong. But other than that, it just remains for me to say, um, big thank you and, uh, all the best with your amazing business ventures in 2017. And, uh, hopefully we'll get you back on the podcast, uh, in the near future to, to talk about your latest thinking. Perfect. Sounds good. And thanks for having me. Now, if you haven't already done so, I'd really ask you to subscribe to the British Amazon Seller Podcast on iTunes. Very simply, if you have an iPhone, go to the podcast app and just go to British Amazon Seller. Just put that in as a search term, rather. And if you are on a Mac or a PC, just go to iTunes and do the same thing. Look in the iTunes store under podcast, then put in British Amazon Seller. It'll only take you a second, but you will then be up to date with all the videos from now on. And we've got a ton of great guests coming up, including people like Greg Mercer and Will Churnland, who've just been on. We've got Brad Moss, who used to create and even run half of Seller Central. Pretty amazing guy. Um, we had Jeremy from Forecastly, who helps with great expertise on the whole business of inventory management and so on. I mean, it's, it's a who's who is of Amazon and it really is. So that's the first thing I would say. If you want to help yourself, if you haven't already done it, subscribe to British Amazon Seller. The second thing to say is very simply join our Facebook group because not only will you get to interact with other people there, I get in there regularly and answer questions and are offering a new feature and that is an, a weekly Q&A on Facebook Live on video, especially for you if you are in the Facebook group. So if you haven't already joined us, there's a very powerful reason to do that. Very simply, join us at www.amazingfba.com forward slash FB, F as in face, B as in book. I will need to approve you because it's a spam free zone. So I make sure I know who's there in there and I kick people out pretty quickly if they start pitching. So it's a pitching free zone, guys. Pure value, pure content and it's available to you and all those bonuses if you just join us is absolutely free always will be www.amazingfba.com forward slash fbf as in face beers in book look forward to seeing you in there and all your helpful comments and now on with the show